Welcome to the Inspired Evolution, and it is a cosmic treat to be here today. We have with us Kelly Marie Kerr. Kelly, how are you, Sister Bear? I'm very well. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it is such a treat to have you here. For those tuning into Kelly for the first time, she is humbly putting together the old stories with the new science. And she's doing this with a lot of grace. Uh, she's written a book called The God Design. Um, and I think there's, is Elevation out? Is it on its way? Where's Elevation yeah. out, Kelly? Elevation was published about a month ago. So uh, it's yo. available. Yeah, awesome, <laughs> awesome. So for those tuning in, um, maybe best coming from you, what is what is your inspiration behind writing? Um both the God design and elevation, like uh, God design already cut, touched into so many different uh, inspiration points for yourself, um, but then also elevation. So tell us a little bit about uh, the inspirations behind your writing. Um, yeah, so I was a writer um, anyway before mm. um, veering off into these um, your own passions around amazing topics I can't believe I ever wrote anything else to be quite frank mm -hmm. uh, it all seems like a complete moo point now um, so yeah with the god design um, just from my own personal journey um, my own awakening um, kind of time of really starting to see through the veil as it were um, I've always had very uh, vivid dreams um, and visions and sometimes um, moments of like um, hearing like whispering while I'm asleep. And uh, one of the things that I started hearing was seek vision. And I didn't really know what it meant. Um, and I saw a blank YouTube channel um, in a dream and I felt that that was kind of entwined somehow with this Sikh vision method. And I was digging really deep at the time um, in quite a traditional but very practical Christian way. I mean, I was just praying like constantly doing what I used to call Christian yoga, um, just spending hours in on my mat in contemplation. And um, I was also regularly in the church, although I was having major like conflict going on about what, you know, something, I know there's more than this. I know that this is great and this mm -hmm. is very uplifting for a lot of people. Um, and it's certainly um, doing the world a service in a way, but also like I could just, it was like I knew that there was something I wasn't quite getting. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what that was yet. But, uh, but the inner, the, like, you know, the most inward part of me 100% knew that it was there and that, you know, I had to continue on this quest to find the missing piece, even though I had no idea um, what it would be. Mm. Um, and then I started doing more fasting. And that's when really things just really switched up for me. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to do um, my first Daniel fast, which is basically like a really strict vegan um, diet um mm -hmm. with also like a 16 8 pattern in there so you know from the last time i ate in the evening i would leave it 16 hours until the next day when i would have my first you know Break shake or yeah. whatever it was um and at that time my dreams just became even clearer um, and I would just have the notepad next to me every night. Um, and it was funny because I was reading the Bible all the time, mm. you know, just searching for anything that 
you know, really struck a chord with me. And I've always loved the Bible in the sense of when you read it and you apply it to yourself, like what do the parables mean for me in my life? Mm. It can be really like, you know, it's it's so like it's, there's just such a wealth of wisdom in there, mm. even before you get to the esoteric stuff. So, you know, with the Daniel fast, it, one of the scriptures was that Daniel had clarity in all of his dreams and visions because mm. of his fasting. And that was literally like what happened. Your to direct me. experience as well. Yeah. I just started understanding what I was seeing. Like I, there was um, a moment where I was seeing like different colors coming out of my body and like different geometric shapes. Um, but then also in my waking life, I would, I started seeing these things everywhere and, you know, just in patterns on the floor and different things. And I still couldn't really like piece it all together. Um, how did you feel going through that? Did you feel at a certain point, like it was like, did it feel okay to be going through like, yeah. It felt unnerving. Um, I was on maternity leave, so I was really blessed to have like, you know, time by myself, um, you know, with a gorgeous newborn baby. So like the oxytocin in me was like bubbling up like on an, crazy. On another level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I knew from bringing like another life into the world and having this whole new experience of love mm. that everything that I was doing before I mean, I had been told multiple times, like growing up, like, you know, you need to find your calling, this, that and the other. But I never really understood what it was. I kind of always thought that I would be a writer, you know, Mm -hmm. and an actor. And and that would be like somehow my platform to share my love for God. But I didn't Mm -hmm. know exactly what that looked like. Um, And then one night I was. I'd actually had like a kind of rubbishy day, I wasn't like you know feeling particularly optimistic about anything and um I was in this fast and obviously it was you know kind of taking its toll on me in terms of like I was feeling like is this really worth it why am I doing this Mm. um and then that night I sat up in bed It was like something like just pushed me up forward and I started to feel like vibrations in my spine. And Mm. I felt like this light go on and I saw like this black and white explainer video and I just saw all these other like flashing images. I saw the four um, animals from the book of Ezekiel and I didn't want this feeling to stop, Mm. but I also didn't believe that it was happening. I Mm. also didn't want to tell anybody about it because I felt like they would all think that I had lost my mind. Like the Mm. Christian church that I was in were very traditional in terms of like, if I started talking about anything that wasn't like strictly their version of what, you know, they perceived to be their truth. Yeah, Yeah, um, taught, then, you know, I could easily be like on the chopping board. Mm. And I thought my husband would just definitely like think that I'd lost it. So I just kind of continued to pursue this path of searching like completely anonymously just by myself like in my Mm. own time every time my baby went to sleep for a nap I would get the bible out or you know get my yoga mat out and um because of the vibration that I felt and I was also seeing like blue oil rising up in my dreams just completely defying gravity Um, And there was this one point where somebody gave me a glass of water to drink and the glass had like blue spirals in the pattern of the glass. And I was like, oh, my gosh, blue oil again, like, for goodness Mm. sake, what is going on? Mm. Um, And I think that's when I found out more about the Kundalini energy. Um, But but to me, Kundalini was something that like you kind of don't mess with. 
you know so it all felt a little bit taboo like oh um you know should i be going there but i really mm -hmm. wanted to know what had happened to me and i knew that it was amazing and it was positive and it felt great so um i wasn't scared in any way shape or form i actually mm -hmm. felt more loved up and more like enchanted by the world than ever before like mm -hmm. the colors seemed brighter i felt more grateful for everything um I just felt like I was living like a much more, I just felt like my vibration had just totally changed and like someone had just taken the roof off of my like understanding, but I still mm -hmm. didn't fully understand mm -hmm. what it all was. It's so silly. Um, and then one day I was like flicking through YouTube and I saw, um, this John St. Julian video um, where he had a clip of Jim Carrey um, talking about the sacred secretion. And it was the language that Jim Carrey used that finally connected the dots for me because mm. he said, like, I knew that Christ had been alive for 33 years. And I knew that there were 33 vertebrae in the spine because of my yoga practice, but I'd never put the two together. Mm. Um, and just little things like that. And that was really like the big, like, I probably should have got it before that, because mm. when I look back now and I look at my dream journal of all the notes that I took, I'm like, duh, like how long, mm. like literally, you know, God, the ancestors, like our guides, whatever you call them, like we're literally shouting at me, like, come on, like, look, look what we're showing you. Um, so yeah, that was very much my inspiration. And because of the vision that I'd had about a black and white explainer video, and because of how much it meant to me personally to finally connect those dots, I was like, right, let's explain this and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll put it on YouTube because that's obviously like what, you know, my higher self wants me to do for some mm -hmm. reason and and that I felt very nervous about doing that even though I knew I was 100% guided to do it and even though you know there was no question in my mind that it was the right thing for me and for anyone who would come across it I was nervous because prior to that my YouTube channel was just very much like a, a vanity thing it was like I use it to send self tapes to casting directors, you know, for mm. auditions and, you know, for very little else. Mm. So to put something like, you know, that's quite controversial and a lot of people would look at it and go, what on earth is she talking about? Mm -hmm. You know, I considered like, oh, maybe I should like open a completely new account and just like put it use on an there. alias. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so I don't yeah. just want to be completely shunned from society. Um, but also I felt like um, the production company that I was working for at the time, um, I had a lot of conflict about some of the projects that we were making. So I knew that I, my higher self wasn't happy in, in what the role that I had, I knew that my identity was clashing with what I was mm. doing. And that's why I wasn't, you know, maybe having success because actually the sincerity wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually just said, well, I'm going to just do it because I have been asking and asking and asking, like, you know, for God to reveal my purpose. I have been, you know, seek and ye shall find like the verse uh, Matthew 6, 33, that is like, you know, seek ye first and all else shall be added unto you. That had literally become my life. Mm. So I was like, right, I've been seeking. This is what I've been shown. So I'm just going to be obedient and, and put this video out. And I did. And I mean, from that moment on, like I realized like, okay, I'm a writer. Like this needs to be a book. Mm. Like, and then the book of Revelation had always been like my kind of favorite book in terms of like it's shrouded in the most mystery mm. and like people are intrigued by it. Mm -hmm. um, so I started doing YouTube videos that were like a chapter by chapter breakdown of 
the book of Revelation. Revelations. And during that process, uh, people who watch my videos started saying, like, I would love to have this as a reference book. You know, is this going to be your next book? And I was like, mm. yeah, it totally I is. I because surrender. it doesn't yeah. make sense that it would be. <laughs> like, so yeah. it's been a really organic process. Mm -hmm. um, which probably sounds a bit cliche, but it's it's true that I think mm -hmm. when you really seek to just find what is authentic to you and, you know, you're asking the big questions and you're giving yourself time to receive the answers, they just, you really start to become like a very um, good receiver of... Mm -hmm you know, any information, any knowledge that you're really looking for, right? Like, I feel like it's all out there on this, like, mega cloud mm -hmm. um, that you can't subscribe to monthly. Like, you know, it's not that easy, but everything's there. Mm -hmm. And when we become receivers, we can actually just tap into whatever thing we're looking for at any given time. Um but, you know, in order to stay clear, it's like mm -hmm. um, my friend Heath, um, you may know him. He has a radio show um, called The Divine Light, which is awesome. But he always uses this analogy of a crystal ball um, where, like, that's what we're all seeking to be. Mm -hmm. Like, is it a crystal ball? Yes, it is. Um and why is it important for us to, to have clarity in mind is because, you know, our soul body, like our water body is very much our lens. Mm. That's, you know, the funnel or the filter between the spiritual invisible realm and the physical, like visible manifest realm. Mm -hmm. So the clearer we are and the more time we, we spend in meditation and everything else, the better we just become at, at being able to figure out what we need to figure out. And receive. Yeah, because that was going to be one of my questions. How did you prime yourself as a receiver? Um, but that's kind of a question I was hoping to tack on to. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, like, is reading into your books, it's, it very much alludes to existence being a vibratory experience. Um, could you expand on that for us? Yeah, because... In our essence, you know, we are vibrational beings. Mm. Our, you know, our spiritual invisible selves are electromagnetic waves um, and sound manifests into reality and then manifests into light and salt and, and everything else and eventually into the molecules that or the pixels phosphorus, quantum atoms, like there's such, there's so many different names that these things come under. I think that's part of the problem in society is that people get bogged down by, oh, well, I don't the know labels. about, <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know about quantum physics. It's like, but maybe you do, but you just know about it in a different way, like mm. with a different set of labels. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I, I think we're all vibrational beings and the more we seek to raise our vibration, the clearer our consciousness comes, we, we raise, we elevate. Um, and that's essentially what happened to John in the book of Revelation is he was seeking the light and he was, you know, following his higher self and he had an experience of enlightenment that to him, you know, was seeing Jesus mm -hmm. uh, because as the perfect avatar of the divine light, you know, you could say that that's what Jesus is like in a kind of 4D way. Mm. You went uh, deeper in your book to explain that the, the head, uh, is like a, like runs on like electromagnetic like is, is an electric device, whereas the heart is a magnetic device. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about that? So when you think about um, any kind of circuit, 
you have mm. to have like the electro and the magnetic to to actually form the current mm. so i mean in a physical way like it's the sodium and potassium channels that create that balance for us um and in an invisible way like it is those currents of electricity and magnetism so the heart is you know the kind of key to the spiritual body the which is the respiration system um and it's it's highly magnetized and you can kind of sense it if you if you do like heart centered meditations and you think deeply about like what am i feeling or what do i hope to achieve and you ask your heart you'll get a different um answer than if you do like a crown chakra like based meditation and you're you're thinking more like up here like what do I want or what do I hope to see mm. um and one will always be based on you know what you've seen and the experiences of things around you and the other one will be based on like the impossible um or the kind of hope of what's like yet to come so it's kind of like a way of like finding a balance between the electronic brain and the magnetic heart that really like brings us into a really good balance of what we are hoping to experience and what we're hoping to see like reveal itself like in our lives and in in another people's lives as well you know like mm. a hope for a better future as it were yeah i find it I found that really powerful, just that discernment, because it really gave me bandwidth. And I love that you mentioned people have their own experience of things. And sometimes the labels don't necessarily serve us because we get caught up in, you know, is it this or is it that? But the thing that came through for me was just in my meditation experience, just going, ah, this is run by electricity. And like, like you just described, it takes in all this input. Whereas this is operating from a very different frequency, which is like magnetism and then allowing myself to sort of, because we often talk about dropping into the heart, feeling into the heart space and realizing that, oh, like, what is that palpably? Like, how does that actually feel? And it gave me more permission to experience and open up to a different experience to drop into the heart space. There's uh, a, <laughs> there's this, uh, I, I do want to get into the controversial. <laughs> I just want to, because you, because there was a point there where you were sitting there, like you know, you said like launching this content online um, felt controversial to you, and I'm intrigued by a lot of what you're doing in terms of you know you found like all these readings and all this stuff on the sacral secretion, and then you're also looking into like Kundalini yoga and the way I look at the world as a as a coach, it's like each individual is perfectly poised to be in the position that they are. Like I'm a purpose coach, right? So in there, find, like just reading into like, okay, you've been, you know, tuning into like the, the Bible for so long and then there's your yoga mat at the same time and it's like this or this was always meant to be <laughs> like your download, right? Um, but, yeah, tell us a little bit about um, what that aha moment must have felt like when you're sort of marrying kind of yoga wisdom to, um, you know, the wisdom in the Bible and how that sort of, you know, mustn't have been an easy reconciliation. And then, you know, like you said, some of it might be controversial. It felt like um, the initial feeling in the first moment was just total awe and, and gratitude. Like, oh, thank you. Like, mm. I finally, I can I finally just see these two worlds and how they just marry together perfectly and I was really grateful for the fact that I when I studied dance um at university it was like that's what really really took me deeper into my yoga practice and I never really meant to study dance at university but I had to choose another subject to go with mm. the acting <laughs> so I was just like looking back and seeing all these stepping stones and thinking like wow i was on the path the whole time yeah and i didn't even realize like what an amazingly beautiful perfect 
journey it was Mm. and wow like thank you thank you thank you so much like oh my gosh of course the blue oil and they say like the answer comes out of the blue because like spirit is always linked with the color blue and it's like Mm. the blueprint is the dna blueprint and you have a blueprint for your house like everything like you know i just it was just a total moment of clarity and beauty and it was just wonderful. Mm. And I was very much like just floating around in this ecstasy for, I don't know how long, like a week or so, maybe more. Um, But then, you know, like any major cataclysm, like the dust started to kind of settle from like the light that like pierced my darkness. And then all of a sudden there was these questions about like, well, how does this fit in with my real world? Like my yeah. everyday Kelly life. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. I can't talk to the mums at baby club about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like my church friends aren't probably going to go for it. Mm. Um, so I kept quiet on the church front. I was putting out my YouTube videos mm. Um but nobody really knew that I had a YouTube channel in my like church within my church circles. So that was fine um, until I got a call one day that I uh, needed to come and have a meeting with the pastor. Mm. And um, I was I was terrified. I was like, OK, here we go. I'm going to I'm going to be cut from the <laughs> from the flock. Um, and yeah, it wasn't fun really. Like, um, I I feel fine about it and I felt fine about it at the time, but I think what I realized was the level of judgment. And there were some questions that I posed to my pastor, uh, that he certainly did not appreciate, Mm. um, because I think I was being questioned so deeply um, about what my motives were and if I knew whether I was leading people astray away from Christianity and and everything else. And and I kept saying, well, I'm not, though, because Mm. actually, like, I feel closer to God than ever before, and Mm -hmm. this feels wonderful. And, Mm -hmm. like, you know, no offence, but... I feel like more people should know about this because if they knew the power within themselves, they, you know, all these depressions and illnesses and everything else that we pray for in an exterior way could actually have more chance of being healed on an interior level, which is like where the manifestation begins. Um, And there was a couple of things that I asked him um, like about Bible the roots of the Bible and, you know, did he know that the book of Joshua was actually like once called the book of Jesus. And it was at that moment that I realized he knew everything I was talking about, more or less, Mm. maybe Mm -hmm. not in the same way through the same lens as I have come to understand it. But he, you know, it was like, Okay, so I I just realized in that moment, you're actually choosing not to share like the deeper meanings. And to this day, I have no idea why that is the choice, but it was like my higher self just letting me know in that moment, this isn't a case of like, Kelly, you know something that he doesn't. This is a case of he knows exactly the tree that you're like barking up and he's had his own revelations in this way. But like, there's a, there's a choice to suppress. And, Mm. you know, if that's to protect people and to keep things simple, because, you know, raising the Kundalini, like I've come to learn now, like years on, isn't like, an overnight job like yeah I had this moment of complete you know bliss um and I wouldn't change that for anything in the world but it's an ongoing process 
there are many things that I've experienced and there are many like parts of my past and things that I didn't know I hadn't processed that I've had to to work through because of this level of kind of sincerity like self you start to have vision in a really um kind of uh extreme way you kind of start to like notice things that don't add up um mm. with people in your life um and it can be actually quite quite troubling because mm. you know when you see people in a new light and you start to notice like hidden agendas even in not even like you know on a personal level yes but also like just in the world around like in general and you think you know that's not right like you know i struggled to face like some of the conspiracies that people talk about because in my heart i'm like surely not surely people wouldn't mm. wouldn't be this way or wouldn't have this like agenda why why is that their motivation to you know i i have struggled with facing like because in the hermetic laws when they talk about the pendulum um they say that you know when you've experienced and opened to this extreme light the fallback is that you're also able to see more of the shadows hmm. so if your pendulum you know your consciousness pendulum is just kind of here and it's like at a happy medium yeah you can see a little bit of shade you can see a little bit of light you know everything's pretty fine but once you start swinging into like real clarity and and vision and love you you know the polarity is that there is you know another side to that and it's funny because it's something that i continue to school myself on mm-hmm. and guide myself through Probably because the direct experience of it as well yeah yeah there's different ways of of dealing with it um one of you know my favorite authors is charles fillmore a unity teacher and he just you know it's like you you just got to deny it every step of the way because anything that is not of divine love is a deception and through denial um and affirmation you know we can really shape the world that we live in um but it's really hard to go to be shown something awful and then to go oh well i don't believe that's true and it's not that you don't believe it's true because you know it's true like on a certain level that it's being presented to you in this you know 3D reality that we're living in but you kind of know that it's not true in the sense of it's not part of divine love it's not part of the divine plan so it is in a sense an illusion So I'd love to know your thoughts on that to switch it on you. Yeah, well I'd I'd love to unpack that further and question sort of how do you marry that up with cuz I know so much of your path has been about finding your sincerity and marrying that in. Um but it's interesting cuz what I'm hearing in terms of yeah just cuz you've asked is in order to connect to a certain reality and a perception um to hold that you've almost got to shun not oh, shun's a bit of an intense word but denial like of a of a certain um thing that doesn't reconcile with what you're calling in on a vibratory level right which i think is pretty fascinating um but then how do you then reconcile with the sincerity um aspect of that because a lot of your journey was finding yourself to be sincere with exactly what was coming through for you despite you know whatever the agenda of other people may have been to share not share um you know sincerely what was coming through you was like you know what I'm just going to take the orders and yeah. share it with the world you know um yeah yeah that must be you know and I often find this um 
They say that the sign of intelligence is being able to hold two opposing thoughts in the mind at the same time and still being able to operate um, concurrently and fluidly, um, touch wood, which I find really fascinating because, yeah, even in the conversation we're having, there's the dual and then there's completely unity consciousness, right? So there's like the duality that we live in, but then also the fact that everything is one and it's like, uh, like, I don't know if there's anything more stretchy for the mind to sort of try to like wrap its head around. It's like the yin and the yang, but it's all like one yin yang. <laughs> it's like just stuff already. <laughs> um, but and yeah, it's, like, it's, 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 it's yeah. not like these things aren't happening or that, you know, the person chooses to bury their head in the sand, so to speak, and say, oh no, you know, like, it's fine because I'm over here where it's all like sunny and peaches. Yeah. Beautiful. It's like, you know, that this stuff is happening, but you know that there's no smoke without fire. You know, Mm. you know that actually by where attention goes, energy flows. Energy flows. So if you actually give it any time of day, any headspace, you're actually kind of perpetuating it in you know, our collective consciousness. And if I think about everyone as being, you know, my brothers and sisters in love and light, I don't want Mm. to perpetuate that narrative for people. Which is a really tough conversation to have, isn't it? Because many people will label you as ignorant. Um, And I've had this uh, touch wood, even from the Inspired Evolution um, online, especially on social media, the Inspired Evolution Facebook page was just a place where I was just sharing positive content online, you know, good news, kind of just a good news media channel. Um, And, you know, I've had time and time again, people having a crack, just going, dude, there's so much going on in the world. That's not good news. And I'm like, yeah, but you've, you're getting plenty of that information. Like you're getting plenty of that information. Right. And it's not that I'm not aware of it. Like, honestly, yes, the planet is in dire straits. Like, I'm not sure if it's meant to be able to sustain this many people on it. Like it's struggling and this many people potentially, yes, but this unconscious, like these people just like, like the way we're operating, like out of convenience and comfort doesn't work. Like I get it. Yeah. But at the same time, I can continue to channel you into like, this is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. Everybody can just sit there in despair and overwhelm and not take any action. Mm. Or potentially it's like, there are some really cool solutions. Someone's trying to clean up the ocean. Check out this device they just created. Or someone just planted these seed bombing, like, you know, uh, they're bombing seeds in these, uh, what do they call them? Ah, the sleep deprivation is now kicking in for me. Those, uh, <laughs> those drones, they've got drones, which are literally just flying around bombing seeds. And it's like, that's an amazing thing. Like, you know, and just sharing this stuff with the world. And just, you know, making it, yeah, just making it um, more accessible for people to, feel into hope feel into inspiration Mm. um but i feel your rub i feel your rub in there because it's it's not that you're deceiving yourself almost it's like i like the pendulum metaphor you used before it's like you're aware of how stark things are you know and that almost calls in this other aspect of like okay well let's let's you know try and balance it you know and it's a it's a big ask it's a courageous ask and uh yeah, I was going to actually talk to you about courage because I imagine it takes quite a bit to sort of go against everything you've been taught. I don't want to say taught, but like, you know, sort of being placed in a particular, you, or maybe flock's the right word, I don't know. Um, but then also to sort of go, you know what, really what's true for me, what my sincerity, like what's coming through for me is this. Um was it just the love for what was coming through you or what did like, was there an element of this takes courage, but like, yeah, where did, where did, can you explain that courage a little bit in terms of being true to yourself? Yeah, it was, it was just really realizing that within this message um, that, you know, I discovered for myself I found so much joy Mm. and I found so much contentment um, that I feel like if I were to keep it all to myself, I I would just be doing a disservice 
to the world. Mm. Like with the first video, I had no idea that it would be as popular as it was. I mean, I had something like 12 followers on there before. Mm. And, you know, two of them were like my husband and my brother. So, <laughs> like, it was never for following. I think I just felt like if this actually could connect the dots for like one other person like it has for me that would like make me really really happy because mm. this has filled like a void within me like I was happy you know on my hands and knees going dear god to this outer person but when I realized I mean I had read those scriptures a thousand times like don't look here don't look there like for the kingdom of god is within you and, you know, and you will do as the, the things that I have done and more. I had read those, but for some reason, I did not have the eyes to see. I did not have the ears to hear. I was just reading it as black and white text on a page. But at that moment when I realized, like, I am one with God. I am a part of this expression. Like, for me, like, whenever I feel like I'm kind of a little bit off kilter, we're in life or I'm getting a bit in a bit of a spin and like my everyday life's taken over from my like peace. I do this meditation where I literally like just picture myself as a doorway. And it's like the words that I say are spirit coming out through me as a doorway into the world. Like the way yeah. I choose to see things, that's my sight sense like expressing itself like into the world and I think that's really important because we are all doorways you know we are all vessels we're all catalysts for for love for light for truth um and the more that we can all just express ourselves in whatever way we're comfortable with um the better you know we'll all be and so I think, yeah, it does take courage. But I think when you're really convicted in it, it's actually really hard to keep it in. Mm. Like I would go and, you know, shout it from the rooftop. I, I worry more as a mother mm. um, than for myself because mm. I would hate my son to be alienated because people thought that I was a, a Bible basher or mm. a something that, you know, because they can't comprehend what I actually am and they mm. don't take the time to actually think about... Go into it and actually go study into it. Go into it, so they'll mm. just stick a label on it. Like, mm -hmm. so I try and keep a fairly low profile just in my, you know, roundabout, popping here, popping there. Like, I would never just talk to a mum in the playground about true meanings of the bible mm -hmm. you know um so there's no courage there there's it's very much like a double agent thing going on mm. um but in the respect of you know talking to you and doing my studies and putting out you know youtube videos and writing books like it doesn't feel like I'm trying to find courage it just feels like I'm really excited to share and I'm really happy that I found like my tribe of mm. people who like are excited to hear and that I love to listen to as well you know mm. like because I'm so grateful for the other people who are doing similar stuff to to what I'm doing in you know their various like ways because, you know, we're all helping pave a way for each other. And it's very much like a family vibe. Like, everyone seems so cool. And, yeah. So one of the biggest, uh, well, there's a lot in the God design. But one of the biggest reconciliations, I think, um, is what you started calling the, the sacred secretion, you know, that like and you've alluded to that through this conversation and the Kundalini awakening experience. Um, in Elevation, um, one of the big things tuning into it was the, like so far, 
I haven't read the whole thing yet, just disclaimer, um, is this idea around our our cells and the communication to our cells and the community um, that our cells form and what, oh, like that communication to them. Can you unpack that a little bit for us? Tell us a little bit about, um, yeah, what's going on with our cells and the communications that we have with our cells. Yeah, I mean, our cells are very much have that heart brain thing going on. They have like a current on the inside and a current on the outside that forms like an electromagnetic wave. Um, so it's kind of like a microcosm within a microcosm. You have the sun and the moon creating a similar thing in the macrocosm. Um, and our cells literally respond to our thought and to the vibrations of the words that we say from mm. our lingual bone, which is shaped like a lucky horseshoe. Um, so when I think about like myself, it's also the etymology of self comes from the word cell, which mm. comes from salt. So when the Bible says that you are the salt and the light, in that way, it's actually being very literal because you know, in that atomic sense, we are nothing but salt and light, which is our atomic body. So if I think to myself, like, I am well, I am sacred, I am healthy, you know, I am one with divine love, then I'm actually raising my vibration because my cells, myself, is hearing my, my central voice, my power faculty, which is represented by Philip in the Bible. My cells are hearing that power faculty and they're saying, yes, like that is the truth because they don't, our cells are unbiased. Our brains have developed bias based on what we've been taught and our conditionings growing up, but our cells don't have that same cognitive responsibility, or at least as far as I know, better check out with old Bruce Lipton for that. He's mm. uh, the scientist. Um, so it's like, well, it's, if you're choosing to say, I, I am really tired, I am really worn out, I am so bored of my life, then actually you're perpetuating that like within mm. your body and also, you know, inevitably in your, the surroundings of the world around you because it, it, it just all responds to that central voice, to mm. you, you know, in your power, in your imagination saying like literally bringing life into being so in every moment we should be asking ourselves like is what i'm saying true is what i'm saying necessary is mm. what i'm saying you know vivifying and useful to my life and other people's lives mm. and being really objective about how we use our language because mm -hmm. the Hebrew letters, which I also talk about a lot in the book, in Elevation, all entwine with the creation of the universe. So, yeah, our voices are everything, really. Yeah, I find it, um, yeah, for me, as I'm hearing you share, it's, you know, it's the, yeah, um, yeah, it's, you know, the power of mantras you know, um, and how trying to like basically harnessing that to elevate, it's obviously called elevation, <laughs> <laughs> um, our frequency. And one of the, one of something really awesome that came across me recently, which, you know, was huge, um, as a, as someone that's a coach and a speaker and a podcast, like touch wood, like conversations, you know, my, the whole thing for me, um, one of my, actually it was one of my coaching clients, she brought this to me. She said, she's got a prayer which says, help me to speak words that heal, words that empower, words that build and words that transform, right? And every day, and then she's just been pro pro like processing that every day, every day without fail. 
And she catches herself when, oh, oh, I said something that wasn't really healing or empowering or that wasn't going to help that person transform, you know. Um, and I just, mm. yeah, I just, I love the simplicity of it, but also the profundity of it because it's, yeah, like, yeah, you know, you start getting into even just Genesis, like the, the in at the beginning there was the word, <laughs> you know, it's like literally it's like it's like your words, like they create, that's such a powerful creative tool for everything that then emerges. Um, yeah, it's it's remarkable when you start to think about what your words are creating in your life and, um, yeah, massive impetus to go on challenges of like, you know, I create gratitude challenges for my clients all the time just to go out and just, you know, gather 10 thank yous for every day, you know, because if you're getting gratitude off, you're expressing it back and just being thankful for your life and your existence changes Mm -hmm. your whole experience. Um, Yeah. And even just trying, and this is really hard guys, but not complaining, you know, it's, (laughs) you know, going on Mm -hmm. a, like a, on a, on a complaint free sabbatical, Um, try two days without a single complaint, you know, and it's, it's really hard. It's like your mind Mm -hmm. naturally goes into, oh, that should have been that, damn it, <laughs> I already lost, <laughs> you know, like try again, start. And you start to realise like your brain, you know, what you're saying is actually programming your mind and, you know, it goes both ways. Um, and I love the depth you take that into and like actually, yes, it goes both ways, but also your body is actually like accumulating a memory, a response, a, a physiological sort of action and response to all of that. So, yeah. yeah. And it's funny because gratitude is you know, one of the highest vibrations that there is emotionally. And it really builds the field, like in the magnetic field in the heart center. So if you're trying to tune your heart chakra in more, the spiritual body in more with your emotional and intellectual body, then Mm. it's, it's a great gratitude is one of the most powerful, powerful tools that there is for bringing yourself into sync to become a better receiver. It's just, yeah, incredible. Yeah, I love it. Oh, Kelly, I kind of don't want to let you go, <laughs> but I feel like <laughs> we've come to the end of the episode. There's uh, there's so much more that there is available to oh, us. Oh, wow, we've like, done an hour. That's yeah, we smashed through it. So one of the things I wanted to tune into, like even was, you know, the Genesis ladder and how it's like ascended to heaven and how you paired that with, you know, of course, that was them communicating to us about the DNA strand and the helix and how it's a ladder and it just like, you know, it's an ascending, descending ladder. So there's so much to be discussed in there, but... For those tuning in, the easiest place to tune in to you, um, I found very easy to find you on YouTube. Um, yeah, Kelly Marika on YouTube. And we'll put a link to your channel um, in the show notes. But also both of your books now available on Amazon, um, The God Design and Elevation. So I'll check that in the um, yeah, I'll check that in the show notes as well. The best way to get in touch with you, Kelly, would you say that's that's the way or Yeah, yeah. Um, my Instagram as well. Um, seek vision beautiful thank you so much for doing this with us today thank you so much for sharing your raw (laughs) self (laughs) with us um yeah really appreciate it and you know we know that it's not just you know today's conversation that we get to revel in it's you know a lifetime's work that you put into yeah sharing yourself so abundantly with us here today so thank you so much for all of that and on behalf of myself and the inspired evolution tribe um yeah wishing you all the best for for what's coming up thanks very much hey guys if you enjoyed this video give it a like leave us a comment and if you want to stay in tune for new episodes launching every monday hit subscribe and i'll see you in the next video stay inspired to evolve